diamonds in the rough. NFL Draft Diamonds. Time to shine. Hi, my name is Jimmy Williams with NFL Draft Diamonds, and today I have with me Marcus Tatum. Uh, he's an offensive lineman out of Central Florida. How you doing, buddy? Good, how are you? Doing well, doing well. Uh, talk to us a little bit about you and your story there for just a little bit. Give me a, like a brief history, kind of, you know, lead us into our discussion here. Mm -hmm. Well, I started off at Mayland High School. Uh, Leonard Williams went there. Ricardo Allen went there. It's also Vince Carter's high school, and it's a pretty good Sweet. football powerhouse in Central Florida, one of the only schools that could really compete with the schools down south. And it was just a great environment to come out of. Adrian Killens went there as well. Uh, Ja'Kai Polite was also one of my teammates there as well. And it was just a really, really good football situation. I went off to Tennessee after high school. Um, went through a couple coaching staffs, a lot of a couple ups and downs, but it was just an all around positive experience to learn from and a lot of great people impacted my life. And then I ended up transferring to University of Central Florida, ended up having two coaches there too. And then, but it was two great coaches and with Coach Heupel and Coach Malzahn and Coach Ellerby and Coach Hand, just two great offensive line coaches. And just every coach made a great impact on me in my career so far, even though there was a multitude of them, they couldn't really control it. They just all did a really good job. Well, in some cases there, it's because they got better job offers. No offense to UCF. Yeah. It's a wonderful program, but, you know, that's just kind of how it goes sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, so talk, us, talk to us about you uh, there on the offensive line. What positions have you played? Talk to me about your experience level there. Mm -hmm. I started at both left and right tackle uh, multiple games, and I've rotated in the middle of games too, so I'm very diverse in that, and I feel very comfortable at both. So um, is that kind of how you see yourself projecting to the next level? I mean, what kind of role do you see yourself playing? Just want to be dependable and be able to get put in at any situation and be relied on and be consistent. Gotcha. And what's your current height and weight status these days, if you don't mind sharing? 6'6", uh, about 307. So, yeah, I mean, certainly with a guy of your stature, um, you, you get a guy with, uh, you know, great size, to be able to play there on the outside at tackle. Um, and also, like, if they need you in there, you know, playing some guard. I know you can do that as well. So um, great stuff. Um, do you feel like that's the best thing you bring to the table as a prospect? I mean, uh, what do you feel is, like, one of your uh, best attributes as a prospect? That I won't leave the edge unsecured. I feel like that's very important. When I talk to a lot of my QBs, they can always feel the pressure, even if it's not a sack. So just doing my best to hold that edge and give them the space they need. Great. Um, and so when you're looking at perhaps like the players at the next level, um, who are the guys that you're either fans of or guys that you study that are at the next level? Lane Johnson, because he's like, there's like a different stature of tackles and there's like, you can go from Trent Williams to Lane Johnson to Jason Peters and stuff. And they all have like varying different body types. And I feel like me and Lane Johnson fit similarly the best. And just learning his set and how he just stopped rushes before they could even get started. And his jump sets are really pure. And so I was really trying to study that heavy throughout my career. I remember Lane Johnson's actually a, a very athletic guy there, too. So, I mean, um, I want to say, and this is, uh, you know, something that just kind of, you know, came to me is like, I remember I want to say he, at his combine, like he ran like under uh, under a five second, uh, you know, 40 time. So, um, is that something that we're working, working at right now? Is that, um, I mean, obviously that's one of your goals, right? Right. Of course it is. And it'll be a show April 1st. Gotcha. Definitely looking forward to that. So, um, anyhow, you, um, you had yourself a wonderful career there at, uh, you know, a couple of different institutions, um, and you end up uh, getting the call to actually play in not just one, but two all-star events. So, uh, let's start there with the first one. Let's talk about the uh, College Gridiron Showcase, man. Um, tell me about that event. Oh, they did a really great job of putting us in the best position. We did some of the scans that are only at the Combine, and the uh, creators of it just really just poured their all into us, and there was a lot of good opportunities to perform a lot of front of scouts and a lot of great competition. Great. Um, and so um, – 
typically with events like these, um, you tend to, uh, you know, gain some relationships along the way. Like, um, are there any guys out there that maybe perhaps you met for the first time um, that you're still in touch with? Oh, it was actually crazy. I saw one of my old teammates that transferred from Tennessee to Miami, and he was playing DN there, so it was good to reunite with him. And then one of my teammates had transferred from there to Georgia Tech and played guard, Ryan Johnson. I got to reunite with him. And then the DN was DeAndre Johnson, and he actually did well enough to where he got to an NFLPA invite. So he was doing really well there. Yeah, uh, I remember watching him because a, a lot of those clips um, are actually on YouTube. If anyone ever wants to kind of check you out, I mean um, – they could turn that on because I know the CGS did a great job of posting that online for guys like me to watch. So um, mm. some great stuff there. Um, but then, you know, uh, again, after that event, um, you get the call once again, man. You're you're going uh, now to another all-star event. You're going to the Tropical Bowl. So uh, chat with me about that event as well, if you don't mind. Right. I just told my agent I want the most opportunities possible to show what I can do. So I was like, there's no problem going back home to Orlando and got a lot of good reps in. And it was really like high school. I mean, not high school practice, like college practices and just consistent reps, one on one reps, team run. And it was just a really good situation. And there was a lot of good DNs there, too. Can't remember his name, but it was a DN from Syracuse. Very talented, very good get off. And uh, there was also a DN from Marshall as well, a really big guy who had a lot of good power. And I enjoyed going against him. I'm trying to remember the guy there from Syracuse. He's a smaller guy, right? Uh, there was two of them. There was a D tackle there, and then there was a DN there. I okay. think it was like number 90-something at Syracuse, but he had a great get off. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to remember because uh, there was a couple good guys there at Syracuse that could have been at that event. I can't re – I'm sorry, guys. I can't recall off the top of my head yeah. uh, the names there, but I do know that they got some uh, some great talent. Um, so another thing, that I guess, that happens at all-star events like these is you actually get a chance to meet NFL scouts. Uh, so you get you get a chance to meet them and maybe sit down in some interviews. Um, how did those interviews go for you? Oh, they actually went really well. They just you just have to be honest, just talk to them, and they're going to grill you sometimes and talk about your film, want you to draw up plays. But it's just a great situation because it's a blessing to be in that situation. So if you handle it correctly, it can really benefit you. So what sort of feedback were you getting from those scouts? I mean, what, what were they telling you? Oh, they really liked my athleticism, my versatility, and just being able to just push through awkward situations and things like that, and I let it affect my playing career. And that I just needed to – the Browns specifically said they wanted to see a teardrop in my quad, so I've been working on that. And it's there now, so just little things like that and just to develop into like a, just a great tackle stature. Gotcha. I don't necessarily need you to stand up and show me the tear teardrop in your quad, but I'll I'll take your word for it. So yeah, it's right. Um, uh, it's the VMO muscle. They just wanted it just just to pop because it just shows more explosion out of my kick slide. No, that's that that's fine. I appreciate you really you yeah. know um, being attentive and trying to you know do what a scout specifically told you that you need to do. So I do think that that's cool. Um, mm. uh, let's chat about um you um. Let's let's talk about you throughout your uh, collegiate experience. Um, obviously, I had a lot of great teammates along the way. Um, who would you say has been? Um, I don't want to uh, leave anybody out, but who who would you say has been perhaps like the most? Uh, oh, what is it? Uh, I don't know. The most impressive guys you've had as teammates. Like, who are the guys that really stick out to you that just earn your have earned your respect? So. Uh, let's chat about a couple of those guys real quick. It's been a couple. Uh, the biggest one would probably be Trey Smith, uh, watching what he went through with his medical situation and pushing through no matter what. And just persevering through that really just showed me that, like, anything is possible when you put your mind to it and you really truly love the game. And he just continued to fight. Uh, Juwan Jennings at Tennessee, when he was going through injuries and stuff like that and ups and downs, he pushed through, and now he's doing really well in the NFL uh, Emmanuel Mosley plays corner for the 49ers. He was, he struggled sometimes in college, but now he's signed to a contract for 49ers, just playing really well. It's just, the list goes on and on at Tennessee. And then when I got to UCF, Sam Jackson, I was a transfer coming in. He just was just a friend from the beginning and just a really good person. Cole Schneider, who I played next to, really good guy. My pulling partner, just every time he pulled and I was behind him, I knew he was going to try to kill somebody. Uh, 
Matt Lee, our center, he was a young guy, but he was always in there just leading us. Lakahi was always in there at right guard. Sometimes I played next to him the, my first year there. And just being new into that speed of our offense, it was a, a difficult transition at times because I just never gone that fast. I don't think anybody else has with Coach Hype. And Lakai just leaned on me and I leaned on him. We just got through it. Some of those hard practices in the summer, doing 100 reps a team at full speed. And it was just a good situation. And there's been so many teammates that I've leaned on in my career. And there's so many I've missed right now. And I'm just thinking of them as we're talking right now. Like even like Daryl Taylor, me and him used to go at it all the time. And then even with what he went through medically, and now he's persevering through the Seahawks. So just a lot of my teammates and friends have just persevered through hardships and showed me that we can all get there together. Gotcha. Um, so uh, throughout your uh, you know college experience, what really sticks out to you is maybe like your most memorable game or moment or play. Like, uh, what's a highlight of yours that you, you uh, that you can share with me? Um, coming from the SEC and at Tennessee, we lost to Florida a couple times, and it was always left a sour taste in my mouth because I was recruited there, and. But then we went to UCF and it happened and happened and I had my year there. And then my second year there, we ended up playing in the bowl game. So I took that game like really serious because like I couldn't really, we didn't really beat up on them at Tennessee quite often. So that was really my goal. That bowl game was to really just bow up against Florida and have a really good game. And just that stadium, just rocking at the Buccaneer stadium and just watching Ryan O'Keefe score those touchdowns and just holding my blocks as long as I can just to get, watch him get open. It's just a great feeling. Awesome. Um, again, I know you've you've had a lot of great moments. Um, uh, also had a lot of great coaches. Um, when we uh, think back to some of those coaches, um, uh, is there maybe one particular lesson that still sticks with you today that you know you learned from one of those coaches? You know, uh, obviously a, few, a couple there at, at uh, Tennessee, a couple at UCF, and obviously even going back to your days in high school. Um, is there maybe a lesson from one of those coaches that still sticks with you today? Uh, coach Hand, Coach Herb Hand, offensive line coach, who could, just got there in one year at UCF. Uh, he harped on me a lot on how I do anything is how I do everything. And that really changed my whole outlook on how I just operate in life. And it just made me a more consistent person. And I feel like it better me as a football player, but more as a man in general, just that it truly makes sense. Like how I do anything is how I do everything. And just like every time I was doing something, I just thought about that, like and strive to be my best in everything. And it, and it really paid dividends. Awesome. So let's talk about uh, the other uh, part of you, the part that doesn't get on the football field. So uh, let's talk about you outside of this game a little bit. Um, uh, mm -hmm. Tell me something maybe uh, interesting, fun, unique, special, quirky, however you want to say it, um, mm -hmm. hobbies or, or interests. Um, uh, give me a little something if you don't mind. Mm -hmm. I got my master's degrees in public relations and marketing. And I'm really into just marketing and PR stuff. And I want to help people fix their social issues and companies fix issues when they go wrong. I really enjoy cars. I like trading stocks. I like really teaching my teammates about finances and things like that so they can better themselves and not to like rely on people later when they actually have money, but start now and just practicing safer habits, just building credit and things like that. So like that's just really important that because it's just, it's a staple in your life, no matter how much money you have, just to be financially literate. And I took that very serious. And I just, anytime uh, anybody has a question, I'll always try to help them out and just walk them through it. And I just took that almost more as serious as I did the football field, because I've seen some of my friends just struggle financially and things like that when there were possibilities where just a little bit more education and they could have been a much better off. So now I feel like now that I just want everybody to get ahead. Nice. Uh, definitely something that I think a lot of guys like you know, when they're going in the league, like they completely like sometimes even throw that out the window. Like they don't think, you know, hey, you know, um, I need to be more mindful about my money and I need to know what, you know, how to how to manage it and know what to do with it. Um, uh, you had mentioned there actually towards the beginning, um, you're a bit of a car guy. Uh, mm -hmm. So um, you have like a favorite like dream car that hopefully one of these days you'll be able to drive. Um. <clears throat> it's really the way these trucks are getting like the Ram TRX and things like that, like the Shelby's like 
trucks are just getting monsters and like they're putting Hellcat engines in trucks now. So like, I'm just getting really interested in that, but eventually it's going to be an electronic world. So probably going to have to venture into the Tesla life or something like that. But with gas prices now, my dream trucks are getting a little more and more expensive. Gotcha. Um, I know, I know right now you're, you're, you're training hard, you know, you're watching what you eat and everything, but when you do have that one moment where you can have a cheat day, uh, what is that one cheat meal that you're just dying to have, like, you know, when uh, when you get a moment? So uh, mm-hmm. what, what's that what's that one meal of yours that you would love to love to have, you know, when the uh, you know, when these guys aren't harping on you a little bit about your weight and stuff? I love chicken fried rice. It's like Chinese food in general. I could probably eat Chinese food every day. And that's really it. Chinese food, Chinese food, Chinese food. I could eat that 24-7 my favorite food chicken fried rice that's hey man that's fine you you can't go wrong with that i mean um yeah i'm pretty, I'm, I'm pretty sure i could you know i usually hit up uh you know chinese food like almost every every other week i think mm-hmm. it's just kind of a norm for me so um some yeah. fun stuff there um uh so um i don't know if you've thought about this one so i mean i'm going to give you a little uh just a, a second or two to think about it um uh, you know, given the position the position that you're in, perhaps going to the league, maybe uh, hopefully getting you know paid a, a decent amount of money getting to the league. Um, have you ever thought about perhaps what you would um, do with some of that money if you have the opportunity to give back? Um, have you thought about maybe a charity or a cause that you might um, you know give back to or, or, or anything of that nature? Mm-hmm. I want to start a foundation because when I was a kid growing up, I was growing out of shoes very fast. So I want to be able to establish a system where kids can come in and get new shoes, but not have to feel the pressure to squeeze their foot into them when they grow out of them. And we just keep it in rotation. So just kids can just stop because it was hard growing up getting cleats and things like that. My mom had to go to like the bigger kids section. I was a child. So we're paying adult prices for a child. So it's being able to just keep kids in a rotation so they won't have to worry about it and hurting their feet to squeeze into something small because they can't afford it. So just going through my foundation and just being able to have something they can afford and just feel comfortable with. And like, you know, just because there's a lot about appearance now, but it's okay though. And I just want to be able to help them out and just get them what they need for footwear because I went through it. Like I'm a size 17 now, so it's not easy getting shoes. So even when I was growing up, I was like a size 13 or 14 in eighth grade. So, and then by the time I get to high school, I'm a 15. So all those cleats are in the garbage. So just being more sound about the footwear and just being able to help kids out in that situation. Yeah. I mean, I could, uh, I think a lot of people could really benefit from that. So um, sounds like a great idea. I like it. Um, Mm -hmm. um, All right, uh, Marcus. So now we're uh, moving on to this pro day that you're going to be having here soon. So, uh, where are you working out? Where are you training? And uh, talk to me about that pro day and your expectations. So uh, mm-hmm. hit me with all that. I'm currently in Pueblo, Colorado. I'm training at the PBR training facility. So the professional bull riders train. I'm training with Antoine Burton. And it's like a combination of his gym and PBR. And he's the director of player performance here. And it's been a really good job. And he's really worked me hard. And it's really worked on my core and improved my core because bull riders, it's what they do. Everything is core, getting on those monsters. And so my core has gotten a lot stronger and gotten a lot faster here and just stronger and just, just all around better. Just been up here out West, just no distractions. And I really appreciated the focus that I could get out here. And it really just made me focus on my inner self and just find out where I needed to get better and everything in life. And it's really paid off. And my pro day is April 1st in Orlando, the UCF. Uh, we got a bunch of good players there, so it's going to be really fun. Gotcha. And with all the drills and stuff that they're going to put you through, um, I don't necessarily have to get numbers from you, but which one of those you feel is like uh, the one that either A, you think you're really good at, or B, you're going to shock a lot of people? Um, so what's that one mm-hmm. drill that you've been working on um, that uh, people really need to pay attention to? I'm going to open a lot of eyes on my 40. And I'm going to open a lot of eyes when we do the position drills, just like the mirror drills and things like that. And the quickness that I have that I can establish with my length and size. 
Awesome. I mean, again, we're getting a guy with great size. I mean, 6'6", 307. I mean, a solid guy who can, you know, play, you know, both left and right side. So, uh, lastly, man, um, uh, close us out with your pitch to all these NFL teams. Tell them why they need to take a chance on you and bring you into their program. So, uh, go for it. I'm just going to give my all. I'm going to be a team player, and I'm just going to plug and play and just do what I need to do to make the block and just do my best. And I'm learning the playbook fast. I'm not a head case. I don't have issues. I'm low maintenance and I just want to win. It's really it. I just love winning and I just love beating the man in front of me. Gotcha. Well, I mean, I know you've put, put yourself uh, through a lot of work, you know, getting yourself in prime shape. Uh, really, I think a lot, a lot of people need to pay attention to that pro day coming up here soon. And um, uh, Marcus just kind of wish you best of luck and everything you got going on. So, um, thanks again for this interview, bud. Thank you for the, putting me on this platform and just helping us all out. I really appreciate it. Sure, no problem. Uh, once again, we got Marcus Tatum, offensive lineman out of Central Florida. Uh, nice to have you, buddy. Thank you.